thank you for the kind introduction and i must thank dr neeta dr sanjay danjali and the organizer for inviting me again and i enjoy every every meeting of this my slides are here quickly rushing through here i must say that it is almost now 20 years 20th year of bariatric surgery so we are already in the long term care and the long term care is very different from primary care and i would focus something more on a different aspect of long term care these are guidelines of bariatric surgery for diabetes but by and large if you look at the iidai and the insurance guidelines bmi more than 35 For BMI more than 35, the insurance covers, and the good news is today now, all bariatric surgeries for patients with BMI more than 35 are covered. Now, why talk about long-term care? Can I have this? This is not working. Okay. So if you look at long-term outcomes of bariatric surgery, everyone's dream is patients should, under, should undergo one bariatric surgery and it should work for a lifetime. But the aggressive procedures can give more long-term nutrition and other consequences. So a balance between these is required. And in today's era, probably pharmacotherapy is the solution which can improve long-term outcomes. Even though in this presentation, I am not going to focus on pharmacotherapy because it is everywhere in the conference, but I'll give you some other aspects. The main aim of long-term care is maintenance of weight loss, remission of associated diseases, maintaining the quality of life, nutritional status, and the psychological status. And it is a sustained process all throughout the life. We have to follow it because it's a lifetime disease. As we all know, obesity is a complex multifactorial disease, and we have to treat it for life. With the natural history, there is physiological weight gain, I would say regain. That is because as age advances, metabolic rate slows down, there is adaptation of the body, hunger gets readapted after bariatric surgery because of various stimuli right from the compensation of central control to hedonic and environmental psychological factors and patient does feel like eating and I wouldn't blame the patient. Multiple attempts of lifestyle interventions may not only work, there is something more needed for that. Now, in the long-term care, it is not only care of the patient, it is also care of the procedure, which I will elaborate because it will be something different for you. There are different types of procedure. In the care of the patient, we need a physician, diabetologist, endocrinologist for metabolic control, nutritional control, and also a psychologist for better psychological control. One of the mediums which is used for this is pre-operative counseling in a group and post-operative follow-up in a group again, which can be now digital, and the digital support groups are picking up. Patients participate, explain their apprehensions, and intervention can be suggested. Now, because this is a diabetes conference, I must say, over maybe last 18, 20 years, we have done more than 10,000 procedures, more than 4,500 with diabetes. Of course, there is relapse of 18% at five years, almost 35% at 10 years. Of course, they are easy to control on OHA because their diet still remains controlled. But a second stage procedure can add re-remission in almost 6% patients. I am not touching it. I am not touching it. <laughs> so the predictors of those who would relapse is those who have delayed decision for surgery, those who have diabetes duration for more than 10 years, low C-peptide, or BMI more than 50. Relapse most often correlates with weight. Okay. You want me to hold it? Relapse most often correlates with weight gain. In the long-term care, prevention of significant weight gain is probably most important. This is also not important. 
So bariatric surgery plus pharmacotherapy probably is the newer norm for long-term care. In so many years, we started with topiramid, SGLT2 inhibitors, and then GLP-1 analogs, and we have some newer molecules to play. Now, when do we initiate pharmacotherapy? Generally, the trend is to initiate once the patient regains significant amount of weight, but early initiation of weight loss is important, and early initiation of pharmacotherapy. The moment the patient starts saying that he is hungry, he's eating more, his behavior after bariatric surgery changed, that would be probably the right time to start pharmacotherapy and not necessarily wait for weight regain because once there is significant weight regain, even pharmacotherapy becomes less effective. Some of the clinical conditions where we would start it immediately at the end of one year is BMI more than 50, familial tendency, diabetes duration more than 10 years. For such people, even though they have achieved optimal weight loss, for long-term maintenance, we initiate at least small dose of pharmacotherapy at that point, and probably this is a new take-home. Care of the procedure is also extremely important, and I must say, you all must have heard that the stomach is converted into a small pouch or a vertical long tube or anastomosis is done. Volume at a time which the patient consumes is something which is necessary for care of the patient. Patient can eat more frequently because stomach is elastic, there is natural dilatation. Once the stomach dilates, it stretches the anastomosis or stoma between the jejunum and the effect of an hourglass restriction disappears. Over here, small bowel adapts. And a simple example is, I have treated many road traffic accidents in my earlier years and removed almost 70-80% of small bowel for gangrene restriction, and all of them are maintaining their weight. Some of them have diabetes, high cholesterol, that means their intestine have adapted, grown, and they have learned to reabsorb and that is what happens in the natural history of disease, and that is how we see weight regain, and we need to work on that. For those who wait for surgical decision beyond a BMI of 50, I still see patients with 150, 200, 220, extremely delayed decision, single bariatric procedure would get their BMI down to almost 28 to 32, which is still not ideal, and over years, either there is weight regain or we call this BMI of 32 still inadequate weight loss. And these patients can have very early initiation of pharmacotherapy. Of course, in some, it is known that in super obese or those with BMI more than 50, pharmacotherapy still remains ineffective because there are pressure-related mechanical effects. Even though they lose 10%, 15%, and they have very good cardiac benefit, their knee joints, spine still need more significant weight loss. Their sexual function, psychological improvement needs more weight loss, and these patients can have a second stage procedure. I'll give you an example of a lady. This was my picture, probably presented almost 15 years back. She, after surgery, she conceived once, twice, regained weight. The kids have grown, and after 15 years, we have offered her second stage procedure, and this is after the second stage procedure. This is how she was after two deliveries. So, carrying the progression of bariatric surgery, primary bariatric surgery, pharmacotherapy, achieve their goals, maybe getting married, conceive, maybe prevent joint replacement, have joint replacement, and once they plateau, we continue with pharmacotherapy, and anytime needed, a second stage procedure can give them the same chance which the primary procedure gives. Second stage procedure is not necessarily a failure. It is progression of a disease, and for any disease, whether it is arthroscopy, re-arthroscopy, re-surgery, re replacement, they are stage procedures and stage treatment and not failure of treatment. Another example of the best long-term care is the lady who gave us the World Book of Records. She lost 215 kilograms in five years. So the record was itself at the end of five years. This is how the lady was almost five feet diameter. And you can see her seven years after surgery. She underwent primary surgery, second stage surgery at the end of three years. Then she was on injectable liraglutide for two years. And today she is maintaining on semaglutide. 
So the best care is nutritional care, psychological support and pharmacotherapy that has given us probably the world record and it's not bariatric surgery alone and that is probably the near norm. This is another boy. Initially surgery worked well, then he had slight weight regain and then pharmacotherapy has maintained his weight loss. He could maintain for many years only on topiramate and maybe sometimes once a week dulaglutide, only when he is traveling, he has parties, he has stress, intermittent pharmacotherapy has maintained his weight loss. And this is another lady where diabetes remission is continued with initiation of pharmacotherapy in spite of having a near normal A1C, but we found that her hunger started increasing, volume of food started increasing, and we thought of care of the procedure, and that is how pharmacotherapy was initiated in time. What does a second stage bariatric surgery offer? It improves restriction, that means the amount of food consumed at a time and satiety because of hormonal as well as mechanical control of hunger and increased satiety to central mechanisms. Stronger malabsorption, as we know that fat is important but most of these patients don't eat healthy fat and therefore fat and malabsorption is required. There is improved hormonal effect to compensate intestinal adaptation and all these are incretinomyomatic. And that is how a second bariatric procedure is also a standard of care when needed and should be offered. The second stage procedure for long-term improvement for a sleeve gastrectomy, you can trim the dilated sleeve, you can attach intestines, but there are newer, very interesting designs which we are working on. These procedures only add hormonal and metabolic actions without malabsorption. I will explain that interesting part in the next slide. In the gastric bypass, probably you reduce the dilated part of the stomach, you narrow the outlet so food doesn't rush very early. If the pouch empties very rapidly with a dilated anastomosis, patient can eat larger amounts. And that is why this intervention is done and increase malabsorption or maybe reduce the length of the limb available for total absorption. Now this is the procedure which is picking up. This is called single anastomosis sleeve jejunal bypass. You can see here food can pass through the duodenum and normal passage. This is what will offer complete normal absorption and prevent any micronutrient malabsorption. However, the small anastomosis will allow rapid transit of food into terminal ileum, thereby stimulating GLP-1, PYY, reduce oxygen modulation, and offer the metabolic benefits. So metabolic benefits without malabsorption probably would be the future of bariatric surgery and the procedures are evolving in the same direction. The alternatives to second stage are early pharmacotherapy, sometimes endoscopic interventions which are still evolving, addition of band which I don't like but it's some mechanical strangulation of the neck of the stomach, but all therapies together probably is the best norm. Start pharmacotherapy, add bariatric surgery, continue with pharmacotherapy. If required a second stage bariatric procedure followed by pharmacotherapy, this is probably the long term norm. I am not focusing more on nutritional care because it is extremely standardized. It is just after any gastrectomy for whatever indication, ulcer, tumor, malignancy. Once a year evaluation is necessary, but it is very important to understand that deficiencies can contribute to weight regain. So deficiency correction is extremely important. Correction with injectable therapy when indicated. Whenever we have a malabsorptive procedure, at the end of five years, we have a protocol to offer entire injectable supervised nutritional correction, including trace elements, micronutrients, and we find that patients do well with that. So long-term care, for the long-term care, bariatric surgery and pharmacotherapy should go hand in hand, and that is probably the best way to offer long-term care Bariatric surgery, pharmacotherapy, psychological support, counseling, lifestyle change, if required, another procedure, and being aware that it's a lifetime disease, you can still enjoy, eat, but you need to follow standard norms. Thank you so much.